Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a factorial equation. We have ABC as a three digit integer and it is equal to the sum of the factorials of its digits. So ABC are digits here and it's made up of, this number is basically made up of its digits in a factorial way. These numbers are very special and they're very rare. We'll talk about that at the end, but let's go ahead and try to solve this problem now. Now, when you think about factorials, obviously nine factorial is pretty large and um, even seven factorial is kind of large for this number because seven factorial is 5,040 and that is a four digit number. So that means that none of these digits can be a seven, right? Because that's gonna give us a larger number. So all these digits then, A, B, C, needs to be less than or equal to six. Okay, now, now what happens if one of these digits is a six, right? If one of them, if one of the digits is six, we know that six factorial is equal to 720. So this number is going to be, since the other digits can also be non-zero, uh, let's say A is equal to six and B or C is non-zero, this number is gonna be at least 720, greater than or equal to 720, but the sum. But this is impossible because we cannot use seven, eight, or nine, right? We already proved that ABC needs to be less than or equal to zero. So none of these digits can be a six either. So this gives us a better upper bound. Uh, so ABC basically needs to be less than or equal to five. Now, there are, we're gonna talk about different options. For example, if there's no five, what happens, right? Well, if we don't have any fives in this uh, equation, none of the digits is a five, then the sum, the sum will be at most four factorial times three, which is 72. That's not a good thing because that's a two digit number, right? Okay, so that means we have to have a five, at least one five. How many fives can we have? We don't know yet, right? So there can be, there can be one five, two fives or three fives. We're gonna be looking at each of these options, okay? Now, obviously three fives is not gonna work because that's gonna give you 555, but as you know, five factorial times three uh, is not gonna give you 555. So this is not possible. So we either have one five or two fives. Now, what happens if we have uh, one five, right? Uh, or if you have two fives, let's take a look at that first. Two fives is gonna give us the possible options. If you have two fives, you can have five factorial plus five factorial plus zero factorial, that's the minimum number you can have. The largest possible number you can have is five factorial plus five factorial plus four factorial. Now this is going to give you, five factorial is 120, that's gonna give you 240, and this is gonna give you uh, 200, it's just gonna be this plus 24, so that's gonna be 264. So our number has to be basically in that range, right? And that's not gonna work either. So we have to have one five. There must be, there must be one five. Okay, in this case, what's gonna happen? If we have one five only, then the smallest sum we can get, the smallest sum we can get is gonna be five factorial plus zero factorial plus zero factorial, and that is going to be 125. And the largest sum we can get is gonna be five factorial plus four factorial plus four factorial, and that is going to be 168. So, in other words, our number has to be in that range, 125 to 168, inclusive, right? But that means that the hundredth digit is one. Great, so A equals one, we already know that. Well, if A is equal to one, then we have the following options, right? Uh, we can have one factorial plus five factorial plus zero factorial. And since we have to have a five, obviously, if A is one, the other, one of the digits B or C must be five, and we have the third option for the C or B, whatever. This gives us 122. And as you increase the number, you're gonna notice that the sum is gonna increase, but we do need uh, obviously 150 is not gonna work. This is going to be 
122 as well because they're equal and then 1 factorial plus 5 factorial plus 2 factorial that is going to give you 123 and then we'll increase it a little bit more then that's going to give us 127 so again this is not going to work why because 153 is not 127 so that those these just don't match so none of these will be a solution right what about this one well this is the largest we can get and that gives us 145 bingo we got a solution and from here we can safely say that our number is going to be 145 great of course we can write it in a better way like this 1 factorial plus 4 factorial plus 5 factorial is equal to or let me write the number first 145 is equal to 1 factorial plus 4 factorial plus 5 factorial here's the question is that the only solution and the answer is yes so this is the only solution because we looked at pretty much all the cases and the only case that works is 1 4 and 5 so that's it because our number has to be a three digit number right so here's the question what are these numbers called right let's go ahead and take a look at that here we go here's some information I'm going to share the link also down below so you can check it out these numbers are called factorians so uh, by definition a factorian is an integer which is equal to the sum of the factorials of its digits there are exactly four such numbers so this is what is really significant about factorians that there are exactly four such numbers the proof we're not going to get into that that's probably complicated but notice that two of these are single digit numbers obviously you may or may not like it but one factorial is one two factorial is two unfortunately zero does not work because zero factorial is equal to one and zero is not one of the digits a 145 we just talked about it it's the three digit number there is no four digit number that is a factorian and the largest factorian is a five digit number and that includes zero which is kind of interesting because zero factorial equals one so 40,585 so this would be an interesting I think follow-up question uh, if they asked us to find the five digit number uh, that is a factorian could we find it using the same type of argument like using the discussions that we've done uh, like you know a can be this b can be that so on and so forth so that would be a really nice extension you can kind of take a look at it and let me know what you think and uh, we'll just talk about it in the comment section and this brings us to the end of this video well thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe I'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye